Hello everyone, this is Christian Mode Exiton Interactive, and by the time we're done with this video, we will have created this compelling user interface here. Actually, the only uh, point to this video is so that I have something that I can point to when I start a new project and say, hey, you can go watch this other video that shows you how to set up uh, a webpack config. And so, there won't be very much, if at all, any explanations in this video. We're basically just wanting to get a project up and running as quickly as we possibly can. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is to create our package.json file, ignoring the fact that it's already up there. We'll go out to a console which is at the root of our project and we'll type in npm install or npm init and we'll just use the defaults so again ignore the fact that there's actually population going on here I've done that so we don't have to either I don't have to edit or we don't have to sit through five minutes of it installing everything but when you've done that we'll have an empty dependency section here you can either on the website has either the install commands for the console or the uh, contents of the package.json file, which then you could just copy and paste into here and then go to the console. Visual Studio will do it once you've updated the package.json or you just say npm uh, i or install and it'll run through and do all that stuff. So it doesn't have to install anything because it's already there. So we'll go back to Visual Studio. So of course, first thing that we want or next thing that we want to do is create the uh, webpack config file. So we'll just add a new file. Yeah, I've been taken to doing just text and stop changing them. So let's just make a uh, webpack.config.js file. All right, so inside this file, we'll start adding things. So I'm going, this is going to be a bare bones webpack uh, config file just to get us started. So we'll just start off with having an environment variable telling us whether we're in development or not. We're going to use auto prefixer, webpack itself, and of course the extract text plugin. So auto prefixer, you know, you can look it up there. Basically just as the vendor prefixes to our CSS files. And the extract text plugin is what we're going to use to pull styles. So webpack will automatically include any styles that it processes into the JavaScript. We want certain styles for, say, the pages to be in an actual CSS bundle. And so we'll use the Extract Text plugin to pull them out uh, from the JavaScript. Next thing we'll want is to define our entry point. In this particular case, we'll just have, uh, for right now, just two files, main.site.ts and main.site.scss. Of course, these are just the... Uh, um, site-wide TypeScript or JavaScript when it gets compiled and the site-wide styles they'll be contained within a source folder which is at the root of the project. Next thing we need is to define the webpack module uh, object which holds all the tests and tells webpack what to do once a file passes a particular test so in case of TypeScript or TSX files, we want to just process it using the TS loader, pug. We'll do convert the pug to HTML, then take that HTML and embed it as a string. Um, comp anything that ends in component.scss, we'll take SAS loader, then the post CSS, and then the raw loader to put it into the JavaScript. And in particular case of the site.scss files, we'll process the SAS, do the post CSS, and then use the CSS loader to take it out of the, uh, or process it after that. All right, new in Webpack 4, which gave me an error when I was trying to use this to uh, do a new project, is uh, there was a thing called the Commons Chunk plugin common chunks plugin for webpack I guess three and below uh, now that's been deprecated and we're supposed to use this optimization object 
This thing is what's going to take care of moving common files from the bundle into a you know separate uh, bundle on its own. So what we'll basically do is just say that um, if you run across a require statement that's requiring something from the node modules, then you're going to include that within a file that we'll call common. And so we'll have a common.bundle.js. Next thing we need is the output. So we have an output object. So the output is basically just takes the you know wildcard here, whatever the name is, and tags bundle.js on the end of it. We have the path, so it's going to be located with uh, this has to be an absolute path, so it's the directory name plus we'll have a uh, folder called www.root or www.root, and inside of that there'll be a JS uh, folder. And, uh, you know, if this is a production, which we haven't done anything yet to make it really, but we'll just put um, dot min. We need the, uh, if it's in development, we'll need the public path uh, just to be able to use the hot module replacement, which we'll do in the next video. And then, so that takes care of the uh, output. Now we'll configure our plugins once again. We use the extract text plugin to move the CSS into, um, you know, a CSS folder with bundle on it. Load options plugin will take care of using auto prefixer inside the post CSS loader. And a lot of times I want to know inside of my TypeScript files whether this is development or whether this is production. So we use the define plugin basically just to create or mimic the uh, process.env.nodeenv to tell us whether it's uh, production or not. And next we'll do a resolve object. Resolve just tells us or it allows us to leave off the extensions from the files when we require. So we can require TypeScript or JavaScript uh, files without putting the .ts or .js extent, or, uh, file extensions. And last, we need to export the actual module, which just is exporting the you know objects that we've already created. Go ahead and uh, save that. So we'll close that. Before we can get this to run, we have to add a few more things. So let's go to the root of our project. We'll choose Add. I'm going to choose a new file here and we want to post css.config.js file. This is uh, required to use the post CSS loader. This is the minimal configuration just saying we're using auto prefixer and just having empty sort of default configuration. Next we'll add new item. This one's our tsconfig. A JSON. So the configuration for the TypeScript compiler. Again, all I've done is gone to the article and copied and pasted in. It's what I basically do every time now just to get up and going. So this is our basic configuration. And while we're at it, we will just go ahead and add in the tslint lint.json. And here we are, just adding a few things to the TS uh, lint configuration. All right, so now we need to create those, you know, entry points, entry point files. So I'm going to add a new folder here. So add a new folder, and like I said, it's in the root of the project called source. And inside that, we need a file, TypeScript file for main.site.ts inside of there. We'll do some real clever work. We'll see the result in a minute. And need the, oops, not up there. main.site.scss. And copy and paste. Like I said, we'll see the results 
shortly. So now while we're at it, let's go ahead and see what, see where we are. Oh, actually I did forget one thing that I mentioned in the article. So in the package.json file, I do want to define a script that will allow us to do the compiling on our own here. So we'll add this build script and close that. Now we can go back and npm run build. Give it a second and boom. First error, this little cryptic thing here. Chunk dot entry points use blah blah blah. It has nothing to do with apparently what the error is really. Um, didn't obviously, thankfully didn't take too much searching to find out what the problem was and Someone's already posted the solution, of course. So if we go back in here, we look in the package.json. Our problem is the Webpack Extract Text plugin. This is the version. Uh, we need this thing to be version 4.0 or better. So what we'll do is just come back to our console and scroll down to our commands. So let's just uninstall the extract text plugin so of course if you're you know when you see this video when you've done it yourself if you've all you know installed the extract text plugin and it's 4.0 or better then you don't actually have to do anything the time that I'm making this video though the 4.0 version is in beta so we'll use the at next uh, to pull the beta version So now if we go back into here, yes to reload. Ah, look at that. I meant for all these to be dev dependencies, not uh, just dependencies. So we'll just move that and get rid of those. Now we're done. All right, so now we go back see where we are now okay let's try it again oh get off of there we'll run the build again and we'll wait for it to fail which it didn't because I've already run through this again but you may run across an error that uh, comes up so if you look at the article this is what the error would look like thankfully though this one is pretty uh, explanatory self-explanatory so I have uh, TypeScript loaded um, globally, and so in order to use it within the project, you'd actually have to either uh, install a local uh, version of it, or or you link. So you just use the npm link TypeScript in the console again, and then that will create a symbolic link to the global installation. And then once you do the npm run build, we should get all green here, telling us everything's good to go. If we look, I know it's gonna be hard to see, but within the CSS and JavaScript folders, we have our main bundles. So in order to test these, what we're gonna do is add a new uh, uh, file. So we call it index.html. We'll go to the article and copy and paste in. Great. And while I'm at it, this is actually a um, um, uh, an ASP.NET Core application. And uh, I've already done it here, but included in the article shows the sort of minimal um, layout.cshtml file which includes the main.bundle.css and js so it's all included in there but we're going to use the index there just to test things out so what I'm going to do start up Firefox here oh, I'm not going to oh, there we go so we'll bring it over here oh, who knows what I'm doing so we'll go to our root of our project and we'll go ahead and 
open up the index.html file and of course everything is now right with the world because we've started our project off with hello world point being of course that the bundles for both the main.site.ts file and the main.site.scs file have all been um, transpiled and created successfully and we're including them within the project or within the this uh, file and I think that'll do it uh, for this video thank you for taking the time to watch our video I know that your time is valuable if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends if you have any comments questions or suggestions please leave them in the comments section below and once again thank you and I will talk to you in the next video